Right, so um, we spend uh, 15 to 20 minutes to discuss the detail about this program. So as I mentioned earlier, this program was launched about four months ago. So it's a new program. So we want to look at the motivation why we want to propose this new program. Then the simple structure, admission criteria, graduation requirements, then finally the job perspectives. We all know, everyone knows very well, right? We are now in a situation of the global warming. Since the industry revolution, the population increased about 10 times, you can see. Then the global GDP, all the number you can see, energy consumption increased actually tremendously. And because of this energy consumption, most of the energy consumption is from the fossil fuels. As a result, we have a large increase in the CO2 emissions, give us the current situation, global warming, have a very severe climate. Every year we have, a, if, if we look at the report, we'll say this is the recordedly high temperature in the summer, then in some place in the winter also record a high wind temperature in the winter because of the, mainly because everyone, many people believe it's a, due to the global warming. And the global warming largely is due to the energy production and the consumption because majority of the energy currently produced is based on the fossil fuels, right? So this is a global perspective. If we look at the Singapore context, although it's a small country, we do have a small quantity of the CO2 uh, emitted. This amount of the CO2, again, similar to the last slide, about 80% is due to like uh, energy production, oil refining. We know Singapore is the third largest oil refining center. So we do have a, a, a certain amount of the CO2 produced. The government also have a plan called the Green Plan. The emission will try to reduce by half in about eight years, then we'll, re we'll reach net zero by after another 20 years. And the government already increased, try to implement increase the carbon tax. The general idea is to reduce the CO2 emission and uh, try to uh, try to use less fossil fuel, but uh, try to use maybe more energy, uh, more green uh, energy. So basically you can say the traditional energy is based on the fossil fuels. Now, not only in Singapore and the other, many other countries, actually in, 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 you can say globally, right? the attention that is tried to produce green energy, including the possibility we have a, one of the questions in the survey, solar-based energy, wind, or other uh, alternatives, including even biomass, biofuels. Natural gas can also be considered as, uh, compared to the fossil fuel, relatively uh, green energy because of less CO2 emission from the natural gas. And uh, starting from last year, you can, you know, I guess if you notice in Swiss local newspaper, you can find uh, there are lots of like a, uh, uh, news reports regarding the green energies. This is a one example from Swiss time last year. So basically Australia will, will have uh, two large renewable energy projects and will also provide the energy to Singapore. In this case, they are going to use the wind and the solar energy. Earlier this year, all the example I have is from the streets time. You can see also uh, green energy. In this case is based on a solar energy. So basically you have a solar panel on floating on, in, in the, on the water here. Then even uh, recently actually on Sunday's newspaper, once again is try to shift from the traditional fossil fuel based energy to clean energy in this case is solar uh, uh, power because we are near the equator. So solar energy certainly is a, is a possible alternative. So these are, you can say a few examples. These are a few, only a few examples. If you read the newspaper and uh, some other uh, uh, journals, you will find that uh, this really becomes a very hard topic, uh, not only in the academia and also in the government, in the society, everyone tried to now move away from the traditional fossil fuel based energy to clean the green energy. But we know that the 
traditionally the different energies is is taught in in a single discipline for example we know very well in chemical engineering we talked about a lot about like the petroleum natural gas so these are mainly in chemical engineering for thermal related it's mainly mechanical then you have uh, energy transmission the electrical grid is 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 educated in the electrical engineering and uh, the certain kind of analysis tech economic analysis in the industry and the system engineering we do have these individual department in our college we do have but the idea is this is a, a single discipline to meet the new requirements of the green energy the development investment we need to have a holistic uh, picture to look at the different energy uh, technologies, to the analysis in a holistic way that would allow us to make decision. So this actually give us the background for this uh, program. As a result, so this program was proposed uh, last year. And as I show you in the first slide, the timeline we have. So approved by the university, then by the MOE. So we launched this program. The idea, as I just point out, that the two uh, uh, bridge the gap between a single spring, last slide, single spring, into a holistic uh, program. So the students can learn in a holistic way for different uh, energy technologies, and also can make decision in which type of energy is more uh, friendly and in a certain way can be invested. So that's basically the program have. So hopefully the students can understand the principles of all the technologies. Well, I will give you more detail later about the modules we have. So we'll teach the energy technological uh, type of the modules. And then we also have the kind of like a, how to make the decision, how to do the analysis, the two uh, we call core programs, I will show you in a second. So basically, after that, we can try to innovate the, the technology, then do the analysis, eventually can try to uh, put into the market. So the program um, is targeted for both full-time and part-time students. For full-time students, the minimum candidate is one year, maximum could be two years. Then for a part-time, minimum is two years, uh, uh, the maximum is uh, four years. Current the, the tuition fee is 40,000 uh, K for this academic year. And uh, the, this number may change slightly, uh, maybe next academic year due to, uh, you know, all the, all the inflation, all the other uh, factors. So basically this is a general uh, candidature period. So as I mentioned earlier, we have the modules in this part we call Core 1 Energy Technology course. So we have uh, uh, the module for hydrogen CO2 capture. This is also important. Seems not quite relevant to the energy, but uh, you know, CO2 emission is, is, the, is, the, is the main issue. So we also have a module for CO2 uh, capture here. Then also CO2 utilization, CO2 can be converted into like uh, fuels, chemicals. So this is uh, one module here. We also have other modules. I will not go to the detail here. Then we have the second uh, pillar called two called management and uh, innovation. This part of the modules will, will assist them. the students try to do the analysis, economically cost-effective analysis, decision analysis, marketing uh, strategy, all these will come to this part. Then we also have some electives on a specific topic, for example, solar energy or future fuels. We also have selective topics. Then the student can even take a project, work with a professor in the college. This module would be eight MCs. All the other modules are four MCs. So these are the main structure we have. So regarding the admission criteria, so basically any student uh, from any country who has a bachelor degree in engineering or STEM can uh, feel free to apply for this program. For the part-time uh, students, uh, it would be good if you have the, like a, 
industry or the practice experience which would be useful when you apply for the program. For the non-English spoken country, uh, then we have a requirement uh, for the English. So we either have a top or IE, uh, LTAs have a requirement for the English. Uh, I have a few more minutes after that, just feel free to ask me. Let me go through the slides first. So regarding the graduation, so basically uh, you need to take a 10 modules, about the 40 MCs. Most of the modules, except the one of the project one, which is eight MCs. So all the other modules are four MCs. So you have uh, roughly 10 modules. This is a minimum of the, you can of course take more than for the best 40 MCs will do the calculation for the cap. So the minimum would be 3.0 to graduate. Then I have a few other minor requirements, which is, uh, for example, for core one energy technology course, this module need at least three modules here, core one, three modules from core two. Then the remaining one, you can either take from core one, core two, or the electives. So this basically uh, requirements. Some modules not listed uh, uh, in principle is not allowed to take. So last uh, slide is regarding the job perspectives. This is very important. So as you can see that the modules would equip the students with the technological knowledge and also the decision maker and then the marketing strategy. So we have a two pillar core one, core two. With that kind of a background, there are multiple actually uh, choices can go. You can see an energy analysis operation and also technological innovation management in a company or in a government agency. Also possible consult, uh, consulting work in uh, the advisory type of work in a certain company, also possible. The International Energy Agency actually predicted that in about eight years, the job number in the energy related sectors and associated sectors would up to 30 million. This is a large number of the, uh, 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 positions available. In terms of the Singapore, we actually can even work in a government agency. So you can see EMA and EA and uh, many other uh, uh, government agencies also possible. Even the prime minister's office has, uh, has a, a division in energy actually, because energy becomes very, very important. So there are many government agencies also have a specific office on the energy part. Then the uh, industry, of course, there are many possibilities we can uh, list it here. So, so basically uh, this program, after taking this program, the, I would say the job perspective is quite good. With this, I think I, can, I will stop here. So for more information, feel free to uh, go to this website to find the detail about the, the program, the application deadline, then the fees. I mentioned the briefly, but you can find all the detail in this link. Then you can also feel free to send an email to the, our department and uh, to myself and uh, to Dr. Sachin. So with this, I will stop here. Then feel free to um, uh, discuss or any question you have, just feel free to discuss. You can either speak up or send a message in the chat box. Okay, thank you. Early on, Ken asked about the prerequisite. So basically, we don't have um, so don't have like a specific requirement. The basic requirement is have a bachelor degree in engineering or other like STEM uh, disciplines. Don't have any other specific uh, uh, like requirement. Um, so one question is. Um, all the modules on the energy technology goes very technical. I would say may not be very technical, uh, very technical because the lecture will consider the students from different background. So we'll make it actually easy to uh, uh, absorb, easy to to actually can be can be taken by different students from a different background. 
So that's the first question. Second, any PhD opportunities upon completion? Certainly, you can apply for a PhD program in our department. In, so by the way, myself and uh, Dr. Sai Ching are from chemical engineering background uh, department, but the program is under the, uh, the college. It's a multi-department program. Certainly it's possible to uh, apply for a PhD program in other departments and other our department, certainly it's possible. Where will the application open? So application, we are going to discuss with the faculty at uh, the college and they will open uh, maybe in August or September. So we're going to do that. So don't worry about the, the deadline. Usually the deadline is at this moment, I would say at this moment, the program is open once a year. So we also considering to discuss with the college to see if it's possible to open twice a year, once in August, then the other in January. Currently it's only once a year. So the intake will be in August. In this case, just like this year, the deadline for application is uh, 31st of March. So I have a, do have a plenty of time uh, uh, for application. What are the typical assessment? Assessment, this will depends on the mod, module by module. Some also depends on the lectures. Some may have like a project-based, no final exam. Some may have assignment, um, like a event exam. So this all depends on different module lectures. But I do know, based on the list, uh, if you notice, if you notice the, the module list here, can still see my slides, correct? Okay, good. So yes, some of the module I already know, some actually is based on 100% of uh, yeah. CA continuous assessment, no exam, mainly project-based. Some do have uh, exam. So that's for assessment. So Dr. Saichi, if you have anything to add on, just feel free to add on. Yeah, certainly. I think I second what you said, Prof. Uh, elaborate on the industrial co collaboration. Will there be field visits or research opportunities within uh, with the industry? Certainly, there's a opportunity possibility. Uh, we haven't uh, because this is the first batch. We haven't started to run a program, but we already consider considering the the the. the possible visit to a certain company. And we, of course, we need to discuss more with the companies to, to try to push this up. But at this moment, the first batch of the student will come in in August. So we're going to try to implement this gradually. So certainly this is a very good way to collaborate with industry. Certainly it's important. Uh, question next year is the second intake. What is the intake size for the current intake? Okay. Okay, let me address this question. At this moment, the intake is still once a year. So the intake is in August. So the student, the new students will be will come in August. The application deadline for the current uh, August was uh, in 30, on 31st of March. That was, that was already, of course, closed. Then for the next batch, for the next batch, would it be, if, if we still have a once a year, then yes, next year will be the second intake. The intake size is actually, um, we, you know, because this is the first year, we hope we have around 20 to 30. It's actually turns out the, it, the number we have is actually very promising. Because if you remember, we launched this program in middle of February. After about one and a half a month, we received about 60 applicants. Yeah, that, was, that was something we didn't expect, but it was very good. Then we, of course, we looked through the applications. Finally, we sent an offer to about 40 students. Then 24 accepted the offer. So the acceptance rate it's around 60, uh, over 60%, which is actually higher than many other uh, programs. On average, we know the acceptance rate 
once we send the offer, the student accept this acceptance rate, it's about the 50% for I mean, on average. But for our program, the first time acceptance was 60, over 60%. So it, this is a very good number. And uh, so this is the intake size. The current one accepted is 24. We will see the actual number in August. And in the, in, in the next few years, we hope that the number can increase to like 40, 50. So, and uh, eventually we hope we can reach like a 60, 70, that's to a steady state. The uh, class will be on campus or online. So this is actually a difficult question for me to answer now because based on the current situation, if the situation remains the same or better, then more classes will be on campus because I should point out that the classes we have are on in the evening. These are the master degree or PhD module all the same, usually it's in the evening. So um, this module usually is in the evening lane. I would think that uh, more and more should be on campus, but for a certain set for a certain module in a certain condition, the lecture may actually adopt the online teaching. This also possible, but I would I would say more and more the trend at the NUS will be face to face teaching. Bachelor economics first class be able to enter certainly can try. All right, certainly can try. You can say we have many disciplines. Uh, within the list on the slides, we also have a uh, finance uh, bay, uh, background, economic uh, background, certainly can try. Is there any innovation in course organization, for example, doing some project? Yes, I mentioned already some of the modules not uh, don't have an exam. It's all based on uh, 100% of the called continuous assessment that's based on the project, yes. How many students per take I per intake I already addressed early? Do you need to fulfill any prerequisites? Uh, for the energy technology technology course module, do we need to fulfill any prerequisites? I think this uh, prerequisite may not be a very important. One of the questions also asked early um, will be very technical. I think that the uh, the lecturer will consider different background that the student have, so will not uh, go to a very detailed uh, technical part. So, if there's a prerequisite, should it be uh, should it be I guess easy to to catch up, or you can maybe read a certain certain uh, book for a few weeks, then maybe easy to catch up. Should not be a, a critical issue. Can we apply to participate in the teacher's research project? Yes, yes. There's a module we call CN5550. This is called Energy System Project. This is 8MC module. You can still see the slides, right? Okay, good. So this is 8MC modules. The idea is the students can try to work with um, a, a, a professor in their research team. Uh, in the research project. So this will take, uh, usually maybe take uh, more, more than one semester because it's an eight MC modules, time, the duration is longer. So certainly, yes, you can participate. Then you can discuss, approach the, the professor, then chat to see if you can, um, the professor would like to take you, then, then certainly possible. Part-time perspective students need some experience. Elaborate. Let me go to the admission criteria. So for a part-time, um, we don't have a very like a, a black and a white. Uh, you don't have like, a, you have to have a two to three years uh, uh, experience, but we do hope that for a part-time uh, students, Perspective students, they do have uh, uh, experience. Then when we evaluate the application, we will we will certainly will consider that part. But uh, don't worry, if you don't have, you can also feel free to apply because we look at the case by case. We don't have very specific uh, yes or no criteria. So we do look at the background 
which university I come from, which discipline, and uh, so that's, uh, and so on. So just feel free to to apply. Is there any chance tuition grant will be offered for this program? MOT tuition grant or MOE tuition grant. This year, this year, if you uh, have a chance to maybe go to this this link, uh, your website, you will find that uh, for this year, for Singaporeans and the local uh, and the PRs, uh, there are rebates for the tuition uh, tuition fee. I can't remember. Maybe for Singaporeans, forty percent tuition uh, rebates. CPRs maybe twenty percent. I can't remem remember exactly. So it's uh, actually a large, quite a large amount of rebates for this academic year. But uh, this academic year actually already, unfortunately, already because we only have one intake at this moment already passed. So the whether we have tuition rebates or not for the next batch, uh, then the, we, we at this moment we don't know, and the university will, the college will, will decide later. So just feel free, any question, feel free to, um, and just I will not say ask, just feel free to discuss if you, can also feel free to unmute to speak up if you like. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so that's also one of the survey questions. Personally, uh, to be honest, like uh, I, I don't have, I don't teach you this energy related modules. So I, but uh, personally, I think that the uh, hydrogen might be a possibility. Uh, Solar followed by uh, hydrogen also because solar energy depends on the. We do have a lot of sunshine, but we also have many raining days. So that would affect the implement of the solar energy. Hydrogen, the main issue is the, is the, is the storage also an issue. Certainly the production of the hydrogen also, also challenging, but there are already research work going on. And what's the other one? Another one in the cafe, we have a nuclear Bi biofuel. Biofuel, yeah, biofuel certainly, but maybe less. My personal mm -hmm. uh, opinion is less uh, promising because biofuel mainly produced from biomass, made basically from the food. We're already in the possibility of, of lacking the food, right, in certain area. So that might be uh, an issue if we want to uh, advocate the biofuel-based energy. Yeah, this is just my personal uh, opinion. So Dr. Saichin can add on. So that anyone can feel free to participate. Um, yeah, I think I completely agree with you. I think combination, I, I don't think there can be just one um, you know, energy system, but a combination would be useful for us in Singapore. Hmm. Yeah, there's another question. Is this course teaching applicable to all industry or focus specifically on certain industries? I would say that um, overall, of course, the topic we have is energy related. So energy related, we do hope that uh, you have uh, energy related here, of course, including the petroleum, the traditional, traditional fossil fuel based, then we also have a renewable green energy. So certainly, I, not, I wouldn't say more applicable to energy related industries, right? It's not all industry. Yeah, feel free, any, maybe we, um, any question, just feel free to uh, uh, post. Is there any introduction of Professor Team for the program? Um, we do have a list of the lectures for the, uh, for the modules, but I don't have the I don't have the like a compiled uh, compiled like the profiles. I do have a name, basically I have a name of a list, mm -hmm. but I don't have the profile. So what can be done is. Um, I don't know if you can find the, the, the name of a lecturer when you try to register for a program. 
if you can find it, then you can easily uh, Google it, then find the name and uh, can find the research background and the, uh, any other information, yes. So basically the, the car I mentioned earlier, the, the, the program was proposed uh, much uh, last year. It took a, a, quite a year, uh, it took actually more than maybe around the six months uh, internally to discuss which module should be put up, which lecture should try to call to, to teach the module. So actually the faculty already have uh, have uh, quite uh, I mean careful consideration in terms of the modules, in terms of the manpower to teach the modules. Also, I mentioned early, so yeah, if you have further question, of course, come feel free. If you later on, you some other question comes into your mind, feel feel free to send us email. So uh, you can also find more information from the website. And with this, I guess. Maybe you can try to uh, take a five to 10 minutes to have a rest. Then we have, a, there have an, a few other a program will start at the five o'clock. So later on, you can feel free to I mean, go back to join the main program, um, the main room. This is one of the, uh, one of the breakout uh, rooms, yeah. So if no more questions, feel free to uh, leave this room and uh, feel free to join the, Main, you will go automatically go to the main room. Then at the five o'clock, can join a few other uh, programs. So I will wish that uh, you we, we we roughly give you an idea about the program, and uh, feel free to apply for a program. So just feel free because if you don't know, if you have the interest, just feel free. Otherwise, you will never know, right? So just feel free to apply for a program. Okay, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.